So today we're going to look at the second half of lesson 2-8. So we're changing this topic here to be 2-8. And so we're actually going to do a bunch of word problems, which I know is probably not your favorite thing to do. But um, as you watch this video, you might have to pause in certain parts of the problems, um, re rewind, replay, re-listen. You're just gonna have to ponder and really think about how I'm coming up with these. If you have questions, you have got to, to text me some questions about it. Okay, so here's some general guidelines. So remember that um, our intro to related rates, we were taking the first derivative with respect to time. So if you recall, the first derivative is instantaneous rate of change with respect to whatever variable we're looking at. In our case, it's going to be time. So in general, a time rate of change answers the question, how fast is a quantity changing? So for instance, if volume is, if volume is changing with respect to time, then the derivative of volume with respect to time is the rate, or how fast that volume is changing with respect to its time. Think about these two situations. If you have a person walking towards a street lamp at a constant rate of three feet per second, then remember that distance is decreasing between them and the street lamp. So we know that the distance is decreasing. So the derivative of x, x being that distance with respect to time is gonna be a negative three feet per second. Whereas if you switch it around and they're walking away from the lamp, then that distance is increasing. And so the rate of change is gonna become positive. So it'll be that three, positive three feet per second. So here's the guidelines that we're going to follow. It's kind of a, a change up on the four step plan. Um, you're going to start with a sketch that used to be your let statement. And then you're gonna read the problem. And as you're reading through the problem, I want you to identify what you know, what you've been given, and what it is that you're tasked to find. Then you're gonna write an equation involving the variables whose rate of change are either given or are to be determined. So it all depends on the problem, which rates of change you have to find. Um, some of them's given, some of them's not, some of them you can find, some of them you can't. Then you're gonna use a chain rule and uh, differentiate both sides using implicit differentiation with respect to time. Then after we complete step four, you're gonna substitute whatever you have into all known values and answer the question, essentially. So let's look at example one. Example one is not a word problem, so I think it's our only one that's not a word problem. But suppose that x and y are both differentiable functions of t, so with respect to time, and are related by the following equation, y equals x squared minus 3x. So we're gonna find dy dt when x is three, given that dx dt is two when x is equal to three. What does that mean? So we're gonna find the derivative of all of this let me move my little thing here out of the way. So that's supposed to be a D. With respect to time. So we're gonna use implicit differentiation. So remember, note that these don't agree. So that means that the derivative of Y with respect to T is going to look like DY DT equals the derivative of x squared with respect to t, these don't agree either, so we're gonna use the chain rule. So we're gonna do two times x, which is two x. So I've got two x, and then the derivative of x with respect to t would be dx dt. And then minus, now I'm gonna take these don't agree again so I'm gonna find the derivative of negative three X with respect to T as well. So the derivative of this using the chain rule is negative three. So minus three times the derivative of X itself, which is DX DT. So now we found the derivative of both sides. So now we've got the following information. So I, I could simplify this a little bit if I want to, maybe we'll do that. 
So I have dy dt on the left is equal to, and then both of these have a dx, that's a dx, has a dx dt in common. So I'm going to factor that out, dx dt times, and then 2x minus 3. Okay? So then from here, I'm going to go in this direction, I now know um, we have to find dy dt. So we do have dy dt by itself when x is 3. So I can substitute 3 in for x given that dx dt is 2. So I can replace this with 2. So we're just going to make all those substitutions. So I have dy dt, that's what we're solving for, is equal to, and then instead of dx dt, we're going to let its value be 2, because that's what they gave it to us as, times 2 times minus 3. Okay, so then our x value, they told us, was 3. So now here you're just doing the math. So dy dt is equal to, oh, and let's use proper notation. So dy dt, so this is kind of new notation to you, um, when x is equal to 3 is equal to, and let's run through the math. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 3 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. So our final answer is 6. Now let's get into some word problems. I'm going to try to make this just a little bit bigger. I can only make it so big, so I apologize for that. Okay. So let's start by reading the problem. We have a pebble that is dropped into a calm pond. Hang on, let me change one of my views for me. Okay, so a pebble is dropped into a calm pond. So imagine what that looks like, causing ripples in the form of concentric circles. So, so this is gonna bring you back to geometry. We're gonna use a lot of geometry today. The radius r of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. So this is something that they've given you and it is a rate of change. So any rate of change is gonna be d dt, so the derivative of whatever that rate of change is with respect to time, so d of dt. So write, based upon that, let's go ahead and write that in our given. So the radius is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. So I'm gonna put that in here as dr dt and since it's increasing it's positive and so that's one and your units of measure is important so one foot per second so you cannot leave those off so that's a given the question is and this is what you have to find when the radius is four feet at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? So we have to find, the derivative of A with respect to time, because that's an A, because we have to find how fast is the area changing, so that's DA DT. And they also told us that R was equal to four during that time, four feet. Units of measure is important. So the question is, what is it that we know? So let's start off by drawing a picture of what we see. So I've got water. Well, I have a rock. Let's just start with a rock in the middle. And so I drop that rock into a calm pond, and so it creates these concentric circles. Oops, they're not very concentric, but you get the idea. It creates these concentric circles that are ever-changing. So the circles keep getting wider and wider and wider. So I know I'm working with a circle. So because I'm working with a circle, I know that I'm dealing with area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So that's my no. All right, so the first step is to take, 
let's use first step. We're gonna take this area of the circle and we are going to find the instantaneous rate of change by finding the derivative with respect to time. So I'm going to take d dt of a equals pi r squared. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. So I end up with dA dt for the left side. And then remember that this is really a constant. So it's gonna be pi times, I'm gonna use the chain rule here, 2r and then the derivative of r with respect to time. So I really get two times pi. So two times pi r, and then the derivative of r, dr, with respect to time, dt. So that's our step one. And then our step two, I mean, I guess theoretically I'm drawing the picture with step one, but I'm not gonna renumber these now. So then our step two is to use this equation that we came up with. And we're gonna substitute in all the things that we know. So remember, I know that r is four, so I'm gonna substitute four in for r. And we were given dr dt as one foot per second, so I'm gonna substitute that in as well. So here we go. So d, whoops, I wanna change my color. So dA dt is equal to two pi, and so instead of r, I'm substituting in the value of four. And then instead of dr dt, I'm substituting in the value of one foot per second. And we're just gonna multiply that out. So we get dA dt when r is four feet is equal to, so we've got two times four times one is eight pi feet per second, or actually feet, this right here, I forgot to put in my units of measure, my bad. Let's throw that in there, this is four feet. That was kind of important. So we've got feet times feet is feet squared per one second. So we get eight pi feet squared per second. And so this is the answer that we were looking for. All right, let's try the second one, or actually the third question. So this time, as you're reading the question, think about what equation we should be working with. Air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 800 cubic centimeters per minute. So air is being pumped into a balloon. That's a volume of a balloon. A balloon is a sphere. So if you don't know the volume of a sphere, you're gonna to have to look it up. But I happen to know it, so I'm gonna give it to you. So I know that the volume of a sphere is, changing my color, V equals 4 thirds pi, and then R cubed, that's a 4 thirds, so 4, hard to read. Let me see if I can make that prettier. There we go. Okay, so then let's look at to see what we've been given. So air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 800 cubic centimeters per minute. That's a rate of change. What is changing? Volume. So volume is being pumped at 800 cubic centimeters per minute. So that's increasing volume. So that's a positive rate. So I know that <clears throat> the derivative of volume with respect to time, because that would be your rate of your volume, that's how we're gonna represent the rate of the volume, is 800 cubic centimeters per minute. Okay? And then the question is, how fast is the radius of the balloon changing at the instant the radius is 30 centimeters? So we've been given something 
that R is 30 centimeters, but we have to find the change in rate of the radius. So we are looking for change in rate, so dr dt, when at the very instant, the very time when the radius is exactly 30 centimeters. So let's draw a picture of what's going on. So I have a balloon and looks like this and then my very center would be here and then this would be my radius. So radius is going to equal 30 centimeters. Okay, so <clears throat> that's a visual of what we're looking at. Then I need to take my very first step is going to be to take this volume formula and I'm going to find the derivative of volume. Well, the derivative of that whole formula with respect to time. So step one, I am going to find the derivative with respect to time of okay so the uh, yep the derivative with respect the derivative of volume with respect to time these don't agree is going to look like dv dt equals and then we're going to find the derivative of this. So we're going to use a chain rule. So remember, 4 thirds pi, that's your constant. So we're going to take, we're really just finding the derivative of r to the third. So we're going to use a chain rule there. 3 times 4 thirds is going to be 4 pi. And then this is going to be r squared. And then you have to find the derivative of r with respect to time. So the, remember, that's going to look like 4 pi r squared times dr dt. Okay, so that's our step one. Then step two, we're gonna to start to substitute in things that we know. So we know that dv dt is 800 cubic centimeters per minute. So that's gonna get replaced here. I know that my r is gonna be 30 centimeters, so that's gonna get replaced here. And we're trying to find dr dt, so we're gonna to have to end up solving this equation for dr dt, but let's go ahead and substitute everything in first. So then step two, I'm gonna replace dv dt with 800, and units of measure is important, so we need to keep them here. I'm just gonna put the whole thing over minutes. Okay, equals four pi, and instead of r, we're putting in 30, and remember that is squared. And then instead of dr, oh, we are trying to find dr dt, so we don't know that one, okay? So then we end up with 800 centimeters cubed over minutes equals, and then 30 squared is 900 times four is 3,600 pi. So we get 3,600 pi dr dt. So if I wanna solve for dr, oh, and let's, we've, I keep forgetting to put in my units of measure for this right here. I totally left them off, so that's centimeters, right? So let's throw that in there. So sorry about that. So I'm gonna throw in my centimeters in here. And so when I squared that, I got centimeters squared. So there should be centimeters squared here, okay? All right, so then to solve for dr dt, I am going to divide by 3600 pi centimeters squared. So that means that I'm going to put underneath here, I'm gonna divide this by 3600 pi centimeters squared. It's hard to read, I know. All right, so then up here, we get 800 centimeters cubed over, 
or I didn't need her, 3600 pi centimeter squared times minute equals dr dt. Okay, so then I'm going to do some reducing and come up with our final answer. So I know that, uh, well, first of all, for every zero on the end of a number, I can cancel out those zeros, right? And then um, four goes into both eight and 36. So four goes in here twice and four goes in there nine times. And then on top of that, my centimeters can cancel. So these, the centimeter squared will cancel with two of those. And so then my final answer is going to be dr dt. I'm switching that to the left side. When r is equal to 30 centimeters is equal to, and we're left up top to, well, I'm going to leave the units of measure, kind of write them separately. So up top, I have only a 2. And in the bottom, the denominator, I have 9 pi. And then my units of measure are now centimeters to the first per, meter, per minute. All right, so the change in my rate is 2 ninths pi, or 2 9 pi, however you want to say that, centimeters per minute. So there's our answer. That wasn't too bad. Okay, for this example, we have the top of a 25 foot ladder is sliding down a vertical wall at a constant rate of three feet per minute. So let's just stop there and draw a picture of what we're seeing. So we're gonna bring you back to geometry where you have this wall. And so maybe I have the ground right here. And then you have a ladder sliding down the wall and it's at an angle, right? Well, I know that this ladder is 25 feet long. That's not going to change. That's a constant. But the ladder happens to be sliding down the wall in this direction. So that means the height right here from the ground to the top of the ladder is changing. It's decreasing. So that is a decreased rate. But at the same time, the distance that the base of the ladder is from the wall is increasing. Because as this ladder goes down, it's going to increase out to here. So this is increasing. So we have two different rates occurring. We have, and let's just call this rate x and this rate y. So our rate of x, our distance away from the wall is increasing. And our rate y, our distance, the height of the ladder is, top of the ladder is from the wall to the ground is decreasing. So remember this is a right angle here, creating a right triangle. And so we might be using Pythagoras' theorem here because we're talking about side lengths of a triangle. So Pythagoras' theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In our case, we like to use x's and y's in calculus. So we've got instead of a, x, instead of b, y, and then we know our c, which is 25. So I know that the equation I'm going to use is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. Two things are changing in this equation. Our x is increasing, our y is decreasing at particular rates. Now they give us one of those rates. They said that the ladder is sliding down the vertical wall at a constant rate of three feet per minute. So you might want to highlight that. So that's something that we've been given. And that's this value right here. Because it's decreasing, we know that that's negative. So that rate is y in respect to, uh, to time. So I'm going to write that as dy dt is equal to negative 3 and then it's feet per minute. Okay. So then, keep going, it says, when the top of the ladder is seven feet from the ground. So I know that y is seven, all right? So at the point that the ladder is seven feet from the ground, what is the rate of change of the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall? So we're gonna have to find the rate of change of x. So we wanna find dx, d 
dt when y is exactly 7 feet. Okay, so step one, let's find the derivative with respect to time of our equation. So we're going to find d dt of x squared plus y squared equals 25. Okay, so these don't agree, these don't agree. And the derivative of this is going to be zero. So this is going to be 2x dx dt. This is going to be 2y dy dt equals zero. So I'm just using that chain rule. So 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals zero. Now, I want to solve for dx dt, right? So I want to solve for this. So I want to get that by itself. So I'm going to move the 2y dy dt to the other side. So let me go ahead and give myself some more room to do this. Maybe I want to squeeze in one more step because I'm going to need a little bit more room to finish this up. All right, so I'm going to do 2x dx dt is equal to negative 2y dy dt, right? So all I did was move this term over here. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2x. So I'm going to divide this by 2x and this by 2x. So the twos are going to cancel. So we're going to be left with dx dt is equal to negative y over x dy dt. I'm trying to squeeze all that in there. Okay. So then, step two. So that was all step one. Okay. So step two, I know that my y is seven. I don't know my x. So at the point in time when y is seven, I can actually use Pythagoras theorem to find my x. So when y is equal to seven, I'm going to say that 7 squared plus x squared is equal to 25 squared. So I'm just using Pythagoras theorem. And so then if you go and solve all of that, you're going to um, subtract 7 squared from both sides and take the square root. You get x is equal to 24 feet. So now I know my x, now I know my y, and I know that my dy dt from over here is negative three feet per minute. So we're gonna go ahead and plug all of that in for our final step, step three. Oh, I guess that was my step two right there. Step three. All right, so then I've got dx dt when x is equal to 24 feet and y is equal to 7 feet. Okay? Is equal to. So we've got negative, our y value is 7, over our x value is 24. And both of those are feet, so I'm just going to leave those off because they're going to cancel. And then times our dy dt, which is negative three feet per minute. So our final answer of dx dt, when 
x is equal to 24, and that's an abbreviation for feet, and y is equal to 7 feet is equal to the 3 is going to cancel into, the, first of all, the negatives are going to cancel. The 3 is going to cancel into the 24 eight times. And so we're left with 7 eighths, positive 7 eighths, because the negatives canceled, um, feet per minute. So here is our final answer. Problem number five is probably one of the harder problems uh, out of all of these notes. So you might even need some extra room. Um, since I write big on here, I know I'm gonna need a lot of extra room. So you might have to pause, rewind, replay to kind of think about this. So let's draw a picture of what's going on in this particular problem. At noon, and so noon is an important fact. We'll come to that in a minute. And some of this is revisiting your pre-calculus work and your geometry work. So at noon, ship A is 150 kilometers east of ship B. So here is ship B right now. Then ship A right here is 150 kilometers east. So this is north, south, east, west. So east is here to the right. And ship A is, let's see, ship A is sailing west. So that's in this, oh, ship A is sailing west. So ship A starts, so here's where ship B starts. And I haven't labeled ship B for a reason. And here's ship A. Currently, they're 150 miles apart. Okay, so I'm going to start there with 150 or kilometers, kilometers apart. So this is 150 from here to here. But ship A is traveling west. It's traveling in this direction. Okay, and it's just continuing in this direction forever. Meanwhile, and it's continuing at 35 kilometers per hour. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, let me mute my computer. Okay, now we won't have those annoying noises. And let me get my other paper out. Okay, so then, oh, I knew what I was going to do before my computer sounded off. So then this is 35 kilometers per hour, okay? Then ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. So ship B is going in this direction north. And so ship B is going to be up here somewhere. So that's why I'm going to label B actually up there. They started here. But ship B is moving in this direction while ship A is moving in this direction. At some point, ship A is going to be over here while ship B continues up north. But we don't care about that right now. At this point, they originally started out 150 kilometers apart from each other. But ship A is closing that distance right here. But the actual true distance from ship A to ship B is actually this distance here, which creates that right triangle. This is just their east-west distance apart from each other, and this represents their north-south distance apart from each other. And so A is closing that distance by some amount per hour, right? Now B, at the point that they were 150 miles per hour, was going north at 25, oh, I didn't write that down, at 25 kilometers per hour, okay? So it is going to be, I don't know, Y distance at some point. So at noon, they were here to each other, right here, 150 kilometers apart. But at noon, B started sailing in this direction and A started sailing in this direction. So by the time 4 p.m. hits, they're right here to each other, okay? So by 4 p.m., B is now up here, and A is, I don't know, somewhere along here, somewhere in here. So we will calculate the distance from A to B 
from here to here, and we're gonna call that Z. So we end up having this right triangle, which means that we're gonna be using the Pythagorean's theorem again with distance. The question, however, is how fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m.? So at a time of 4 p.m., so that time is four hours, and we wanna know how fast is this distance D changing. So we need to find dz dt, right? Because that's the rate of change of z. All right, so what do we know? We know that Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in our case, our a squared is 150 minus that distance of x squared plus that y distance squared equals their actual distance apart from each other, z squared, okay? We were given that the rate of change of y, because that's how fast b is moving, is this 25 miles per hour. So dy dt is 25 miles per hour. So dy dt is equal to positive 25 kilometers, I think I said miles, per hour, okay? And then this distance here um, of x, this distance here of x, just the x, not the 150 minus x, but just the x, x is changing at, put a slash here, so dx, dt was given to us as 35 kilometers per hour. Okay, what are we trying to find? Well, we are trying to find um, dz dt. We're trying to find the distance between the two um, boats or ships when t is equal to four hours. Okay, so here we go. Step one is always to find the derivative of the original function that we came up with. So one, I'm gonna find, and this one's a little, it looks like it's a little hairy, which is why I'm gonna require some room here. But I'm gonna find d dt of the left side, which is 150 minus x squared well, minus x squared plus y squared. So of that side equals d dt, right, of the right side, which is z squared. Okay, so none, um, first of all, we're gonna do the chain rule with this one. So we're gonna find the derivative of this whole thing. So it's two in front times 150 minus x, then times the derivative of the inside, and then, of course, we have to do the derivative of x itself. So it gets a little confusing for this one. This one's going to be 2y dy dt. That one should be easy. And this one's going to be 2z dz dt. All right, so the hard one is this one right here. So I'm going to do that one in pieces. So we're going to find the derivative of this. So 2 comes in front. So I've got 2 parentheses. 150 minus x, and then remember that's to the first power, times the derivative of the inside, which is just, this is zero, and so the derivative of this is negative one. So times negative one times the derivative of x itself because it doesn't match the t, so that's your dx dt. So dx dt. Okay, so that whole thing is the derivative of this. So that's the hardest one out of everything. The rest should be a piece of cake for you. So again, this is going to be 2y dy dt to z dz dt. So equal or uh, plus 2y 2y dt, that's our implicit differentiation, equals 2z uh, dz dt. Okay, so then 
from here, I'm gonna simplify it up a little bit. Really mostly I'm just gonna simplify this part right here. So I'm gonna take the negative one and put it up here in front. And then we're gonna to start to substitute in. So I've got negative two, 150, oh, that looks terrible. It's just the way I have to write. I have to write without putting my palm on this iPad. So negative two times 150 minus x, dx dt plus 2y 2y dt equals 2z 2 oh, dz dt okay so i am going to figure out what z is so I know, and I have to figure out what X is. I have to figure out what X, Y, and Z are because I have to plug in a value for X here, a value for Y here, and a value for Z. So then my second step is gonna to be to find those values. So that shouldn't be too hard. I know that we went four hours. So I know I can find out what X is by taking four and multiplying it by 35 kilometers per hour. That has to be the distance that X is because that distance is gonna be reduced to 150. Same thing here for Y. I can figure out what Y is, how far, right? Because that's a distance that ship B went by taking four hours times its rate. Rate times time equals distance. So that's where I'm coming up with that. So for X, so I've got x is equal to four hours, right, times 35 kilometers per hour. So our hours are gonna cancel, and we're just gonna get kilometers. So I end up with 140 kilometers, okay? So then y, same thing, y equals four hours times the rate for y, which is 25 kilometers per hour, equals 100 kilometers. So at four o'clock, so we went from noon to four o'clock, that's where I got that four hours from, the ship B is now 140 kilometers away in a northern direction, and or 100 kilometers away, I, pardon me, in a northern direction, and ship A is now 150 minus the 140, so it's actually only 10 kilometers away from ship B at, um, for after four hours. So we can easily now find Z. So Z is going to equal A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I know that 150 minus the 140 is going to be 10. So I'm going to take z squared is equal to 10 squared plus, and then this we now know is 100, so 100 squared. And so I'm going to take the square root. I'm only doing the positive square root because the negative would not be reasonable in this situation. So z is equal to, and I want my exact answer. So this is going to turn out to be 100 plus 10,000, which is the square root of, okay, um, and then if you simplify that, that is equal to 100 times 101. Well, the square root of 100 is 10 radical 101. So that's the exact value for Z. So then step three, we're just gonna plug it all in. So here we go. And then the rest is history, as I say. So step three, I'm gonna use my equation that I simplified in step one, and I'm just gonna plug in the values of X, Y, Z, and the values for DX, DT, um, and dy dt. All right, so negative 2 
times 150 minus 140, that was our value for x, times our value for dx dt was um, 35. And then this is going to actually end up being kilometers here. This whole unit of measure is going to be kilometers. And then this is 35 kilometers per hour. And then plus 2 times our y is 100. And then our dy dt is 25 kilometers per hour. And this, of course, is kilometers. Equals um, 2, and then our z is 10 square root of 101. And then that, of course, is kilometers. And then dz dt. We don't know the rate at which the distance between the two ships is changing. That's what we're finding. Okay, so then everything, if I simplify everything on the left, I am going to end up with 4,300. All I did was do all of this math right here. So if I go ahead and do all of that math, you can throw it in your calculator. You're going to end up with 4,300. And if you think about it, this kilometer is going to cancel with this kilometer, right? So then you're going to end up with over hours plus those kilometers are going to cancel. So you're going to end up with over hours. So both of these are going to be 4,300 over hours, okay? So over hours because the kilometers are going to cancel equals. And then over on the right, you've got 20 square root of 101 over kilometers. Uh, oh no, it's not over kilometers. It is kilometers. Uh, bup, 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 bup. I just wrote it poorly. Kilometers and then dz dt. Okay, so then to solve, I am going to divide this by 20 square root of 101 kilometers. And this whole thing is going to be multiplied, let's see, by All right, I knew I was confused about something. So before I actually divide this out, let me remind you of something. So our kilometers here did not cancel. This is not the denominator like I was thinking because it's how I wrote it. It's what I get for writing it poorly. Isn't this kilometers times kilometers? It should be kilometers squared because this is 10 kilometers times 35 kilometers. That's kilometers squared. Same thing here. This is 200 kilometers times 25 kilometers. That's kilometers squared. So we should have here kilometers squared so that when I do go and divide both sides by 20 square root of 101 kilometers we can see that this kilometer is going to cancel with one of those so whoops I don't want any of that to go so we are left with well, let me go ahead and reduce the rest. So we've got um, 4,300 divided by 20 is going to give us, I'm gonna go ahead and put my answer over here, try to write it in here. So we're gonna get dz dt, I'm flipping the left and right side, when t is equal to four hours is equal to, so 4,300 divided by 20 is 215 over the square root of 101. And then that should be in kilometers per hour. Squeeze that in there. Okay. So that is our final answer to number five. 
Okay, so the rest of these problems are simple compared to what we just did. So let's go ahead and look through what we know and we're gonna write, draw a picture. So a right cylinder, a right circular cylinder is changing shape, all right? So the radius is decreasing at a rate of two inches per second. So that would be dr dt is decreasing. So it would be a minus two inches per second. So that's something that they gave us. So I'm gonna throw that in here, dr dt is negative 2 inches per second, okay? While its height is increasing at the rate of 5 inches per second, so that's a positive, so that's another one that they gave us, so that's dh dt is increasing, so that's 5 inches, I guess we could write it this way, per second. Then it goes on to say, that would be my dog pacing now, <laughs> when the radius is four inches. So we're gonna look at the change in um, volume. So they want us to find the change in volume when the radius is four inches and the height is six inches. So we've got two things that are occurring. So I already know that I wanna find uh, dv, that's a v, dt. All right, well, they gave you volume, so that's actually our no. So that should be our part one, that's our no. Um, technically, it's a given. I have hard floors, so you can hear her nails clicking. Um, and she wants to play. So let's change this notation here to our proper notation. So we want to find dvtt when r is 4 inches and h is 6 inches. So you're going to need a visual on this. So I'm going to draw a picture. So here's our cylinder. And then here to here would be my height. And then from here to here would be my R. Okay? So that's what your cylinder looks like. And we have our volume of cylinder as pi R squared H. So our first step would be to find the derivative of that volume statement. So I'm going to find D, DT of v equals pi r squared h, okay? So the left side's pretty simple, it's dv dt. And the right side, you're gonna have to use the um, quotient, quotient, the product property for this. So you've got pi is your constant, so I'm gonna pull that out in front. So pi, then times, you're gonna take the first and multiply by the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And none of these match t. So you're gonna have on, whoops, I didn't mean to put that on there. You're gonna have a dr dt and a dh dt somewhere in here. All right, so here we go. So the first, which is r squared, times the derivative of h, which is dh dt, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which the derivative of r squared is 2r, and then times dr dt. Okay? And then we could simplify that if you wanted to. So we've got dv dt is equal to pi r squared dh dt plus 2rh dr dt. Okay? So now remember, we are trying to find dv dt. 
when r is 4 and h is 6. So we're going to plug in 4 for r, here and here, and 6 for h, and we're also going to replace in the values for dh, dt, and dr, dt that we have here. So that's going to be my second step. So step two up here. So I've got dv, dv, dt is equal to, so I've got pi r squared, and then my r is four inches, okay, and then my dh dt is 5 inches over a second and then plus 2 times h which is 6 inches times whoops r I forgot the r well my r doesn't matter what order so my r is 4 inches and then times dr dt, which is negative, squeeze that in here, negative two, and then don't forget our units of measure, inches per second, right? Okay, so, then we get this equals dv dt. Okay, so then I get, If I do all of this math, so this is going to give me inches squared times inches, so that's inches cubed over seconds. This is going to be inches times inches times inches, so that's inches cubed over seconds. So both of these terms are going to have the same unit of measure. So if I just do 4 times 4 is 16 times 5 pi plus 2 times 6 times 4 times negative 2, and add those together, I get the following. So I get 80 pi, oops, so I get 80 pi, that's a pi, minus 96 pi, and all of that is inches cubed over seconds. And so then my final dv dt when r is equal to 4 inches and h is equal to 6 inches is equal to uh, negative 16 pi and then it's units of measure I'm going to squeeze in down here sorry inches cubed per second so this is our answer that we are looking for here all right, so let's see if that makes sense. Our volume is decreasing because that's negative, and the volume is changing because my radius is decreasing and my height is increasing. So um, overall, at these points in value, my volume is decreasing 16 pi inches cubed per second. All right, so let's look at number seven. We only have two more to go, I believe. An inverted cone is leaking water at a rate of one cubic centimeter per minute. So that is volume that's being leaked, and they gave you the volume formula here, so that's your no. So this right here is gonna go here. And then they've given you um, the volume actually is leaking um, at one centimeter per minute. So they've given you dv dt, so dv dt is equal to negative one cubic centimeters per minute. So that's one of your givens. The cone has a height of nine and a diameter of six. Find the rate at which the water level is dropping when the height is three. So, interesting, let's look at a picture before we put any givens in there. So let's step one, our picture is really important in this particular case. So we have this cone, which looks like this, 
and then right here is my height, right? And then here is my radius. I didn't quite get that in the center, but you get the idea. So if I just take out, I'm gonna highlight this portion right here, just this portion, just half of that cone, I'm just gonna slice it. I would be looking at something that looks like this, right? I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can write in it. And we're gonna to go to a reduced amount here. All right, so our cone is leaking, right? And the water level's dropping. And I know that the water level's dropping from an original three centimeters here and an original nine centimeters here but then this is our new H that we don't know. And this is our new R that we don't know. We know our original H, we know our original R, but we don't know the new H and the new R. So, actually we do know the new H. They gave us the new H as three, right? So I'm gonna set up, these are similar triangles. We're gonna use a lot of geometry today. So this triangle right here is similar to this triangle right here. So I can use a proportion to set up their side. So I can say three, oops, I want black. So I can say three is to nine. So, whoops, ignore everything that I have just done. <laughs> three is to nine, so radius is to height as radius is to height. Oh gosh, I'm really batting a thousand right now, sorry as radius is to height. So then I'm going to substitute in, well actually I'll cross multiply and solve first, then I'll substitute. So I've got 9r is equal to 3h, divide by nine, we get r is equal to h over three, because when I divide by nine, this becomes 3 ninths, which is 1 -third. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to use that for my arch, for my new R, so that when they give me this H here, I can substitute this in for my R, and we have, voila, everything that we need. So, our job is to find the rate at which the water level is dropping when H is equal to 3 centimeters. So, the rate at which the water level is dropping would be my height because the rate at which the water level is dropping is height. It's not the amount of water in the, in the cone, it's the level of the water, so that's your height. So we wanna find dH dt at the exact point of when H is equal to three centimeters. Okay, so step two. In order to find the derivative of our original function, we are going to have to replace r right now with the h over three, because we cannot find the derivative with r in there because we'll end up with dr dt, and we have no information on how the rate of the radius is changing. So this is kind of a weird one in that sense. So I've got step two. And then we're gonna take our V, which is equal to one third, and it'll actually make our derivative much easier. Pi, instead of R squared, we're gonna replace that with H over three, and we're gonna square that H. So we end up with a volume that is, um, so we've got pi in the numerator, let's do pi h to the third over 27. Which if you want, really wanna look at it for ease sake for finding a derivative, cause I don't wanna do a derivative of a quotient, would be pi over 27 times h to the third. So where'd I get that? So I took h squared times h, which is where my h to the third came from, right? And then three squared, which is nine, times three is 27, and then the pi stayed the same. 
All right, so now let's take the derivative of that function. So I'm gonna call this one step three. And then we're gonna do d dt of v equals pi over 27 h to the third. So I end up with dv dt equals, and then on that pi over 27 is a constant. So then the derivative of h cubed is times 3h squared and then dh dt. Well, dh dt is what we're trying to find, right? We're trying to find this. We know that h is gonna be three, and we know that dv dt was given up here as negative one centimeters cubed. So let's go ahead and do some simplifying. So this three cancels into the 27 nine times. So we're really working with dv dt equals um, pi h squared over nine dh dt. So since I am trying to solve for dh dt, I am going to get it by itself. So to do that, I'm gonna multiply both sides by nine over pi h squared, and over here, nine over pi h squared. So that this and this are gonna cancel. And my next step, I'm gonna substitute at the same time. So I'm gonna switch the left and right side. So I have dh dt equals, and on the right side, I have nine over pi times, instead of h, we're replacing it with three centimeters. And then we're gonna square that, and we're gonna multiply it by d, what is it? dv dt, which is negative centimeters cubed, because it's negative one centimeters cubed over minute, okay? We're almost there. So then we get, um, let's see, let's do some um, canceling. So this right here is going to be nine centimeters squared and that's a nine. So wouldn't you agree with me that this nine is gonna cancel with that three squared? The centimeters aren't gonna cancel. And then you're gonna be left with dh dt is equal to negative, oh, and let's talk about our centimeters. So we had centimeters squared. Um, centimeters squared is gonna cancel with two of those. So that's gonna leave us with, up top, negative centimeters over pi per minute which is approximately equal to, so negative one divided by pi is approximately equal to negative 0 0.318 centimeters per minute. So that's your um, dhdt when h is equal to three centimeters. Last problem. So this last problem is actually an easier problem so long as you have the correct perspective and they've already given you a picture of what's going on in the problem. So we have a lamppost here that it's 26 feet above the sidewalk. So what they're saying is it's 26 feet tall. So I'm gonna label this as 26 feet, okay? And then you have this man, Andy Great, six foot tall calculus teacher. So his height from here to here is six feet. So that is a, we're gonna have another set of similar triangles here. So his height is six feet, um, and he's walking away from this post. So he starts here, and he's walking away at this point. So I don't know what the distance is from here to here. 
and I don't know how long or how far he's going to be walking away at this point, but I do know his rate. He's walking away at a rate of feet per, four feet per second. So when he's walking away, that's increasing this distance away from the lamppost. So that is a positive rate of change. All right. So we're going to let this distance here be X and that's the distance from here to here. And then this distance here be y, and that's the distance from here to here. Okay, so imagine your triangles. So we've got this whole triangle here is similar to this triangle here, okay? I only know information about the vertical height and the horizontal distance. I don't know anything about this diagonal hypotenuse at all. So remember with um, similar triangles, we can set up proportions of similar sides to each other. So I think I'm gonna take the height is to height as this whole side is to this side, okay? So that would look like um, step one. Well, yeah, so we'll do step one in here because they just want to know how fast is the length of his shadow changing? How This is the length of his shadow right here. How fast is this changing? So they want to, what are we trying to find? This right here is a rate of change of y. Well, we've labeled it as y. So we're going to be finding dy dt. So that's what we're looking for, right? dy dt. So let's start with our ratio of sides. So I've got 26 is to six as um, 26, the horizontal distance would be X plus Y, because we would add those distances together, is to Y. All right, so I'm gonna cross multiply to solve. So I get 26 Y is equal to 6x plus 6y. And then I'm going to subtract the 6y from both sides, so I get 20y is equal to 6x. And then I'm going to solve for y because I'm trying to find dy dt. So I'm going to divide by 20. And reduce. So I get y equaling Two goes into both of those, so we get three tenths x. Now I can take the derivative of y, and that will give me, with respect to time, and that will give me dy dt. So now I can find d, the derivative with respect to time of both sides. So I end up with dy dt is equaling to now, the derivative, so it's 3 tenths times the derivative of x. Well, x doesn't match t, so it's going to be 3 tenths dx dt. Okay? Now, I have an equation I can use for dy dt. I know that... All right, sorry, I finally got my dog to go lay down on the couch. Her nails are driving me insane. Okay, so dx dt is the rate at which x is changing. So x is increasing, because y is decreasing, so right? x is de increasing at a rate of, where was it? Four feet per second. So dx dt is four feet per second. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute in. So this is gonna be my second step. So then step two, I'm gonna take my dy dt equals, and my 3 tenths is gonna stay the same, but I'm gonna substitute in for dx dt my four, so times four feet per second, right? And so then two is gonna go into four twice and into 10 five times. So I end up with dy dt is equaling uh, two times three is six fifths 
feet per second. So technically y isn't actually decreasing because this could keep on going forever and ever, right? So as x is increasing, y is increasing a little bit. So y is increasing six fifths of a foot per second while x is increasing uh, four feet per second. So that's your rate for your shadow length. Here we go. Now we can answer um, part B. So part B is asking at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? So that's this right here is the tip of a shadow. We want to know what rate is this whole thing right there moving. So the whole distance, like from this distance to this distance, we want to know there's that tip. It keeps increasing, 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 and becomes this whole length here, x plus y, whatever that happens to be, makes the entire horizontal distance of that big triangle. So we really want to find the rate of change, so that would be, I'm gonna change my color here, so that would be d of x plus y. We wanna see how the, what's the rate of the entire side horizontal distance of that big triangle changing with respect to time. So if I break that up, that's gonna be dx dt plus dy dt. So we we already know dx dt, they gave that to us, that's four feet per second. And we found dy dt um, in the previous step, that's six fifths feet per second. So we can just add those together. So that's gonna equal our four feet per second plus what we got here, right? Which that's supposed to be a plus six fifths feet per second. So you can put four plus six fifths into your handy dandy calculator and hit math, enter, enter, and it will give you 26 fifths, I don't want the decimal, right? Feet per second, because we're adding, our units of measure should not change. So that is our derivative of x plus y with respect to t, okay? So therefore, the tip of, Aunt, what's his name, Andy? Andy's shadow is increasing because we have a positive value. That's why I know it's increasing at a rate of 26 fifths. Well, let's write that in real person's terms. Well, what does 26 fifths feet per second mean? It means 26 feet every five seconds. That makes a whole lot more sense. Whew, and that's it. So I know this is gonna be a tough section. So persevere, you can do this. Text me the questions.